Brendan Slaughter, BeaversEdge.com publisher, joined by Beaver's Edge writer and KGO radio host TJ Matthewson. We're here at uh, Reeser Stadium following Oregon State's first scrimmage of fall camp. The Beavers just wrapped up their first two weeks and concluded it with the scrimmage today. A lot to dive into and make sure to head over to BeaversEdge.com as TJ and I both have uh, in-depth notes and reports and everything that happened today. But let's go ahead and uh, talk about a little bit of it. TJ, we're at about the halfway point of pure camp. Today I thought was a pretty good scrimmage. We'll be diving into it for the most part. Not too sloppy, kind of what we expected. Um, and for the most part, like, again, not a lot of big time mistakes, which is a good thing to see this early on. No, not a lot of big time mistakes. Talked to Katano Ladapo after practice, and he said maybe if there was one big mistake, it was tackling. But as you'd expect, still a few weeks out from kickoff of week one, that's, you know, that is kind of expected. Otherwise, a few pr procedural penalties. Uh, but besides that, it really wasn't wasn't too bad. A lot of mixed teams, yes. a lot of mixed results on, on the team. So nothing really defined there. But we did see quality plays on both sides of the ball, which was which was a very encouraging to see a, a, at this point. And I would say for a first scrimmage, you, it looked pretty good. Yeah, I mean there were a few fumbles, as TJ mentioned. We'll be uh, be uh, breaking down exactly who and what. But uh, no interceptions today by my count uh, that I couldn't uh, think of off the top of my head. At least one that maybe got called back or whatever. Uh, but for the most part, clean. And then as TJ said, uh, good play on both sides. I thought, again, we've written about it for the mo for the better part of a week now. It really seemed like that front seven on the defense getting after that offense. Um, uh, Josh Gray and Talese Farraga took the day off. Nothing uh, major there, but that bit of a shake-up allowed, I think, for the defense to maybe get after that first-team offense a little bit more than they've been able to. Saw some pressure. You know, Ben, DJ, and Aiden were definitely pressured at times, having to make some throws on the yeah. run. Uh, but for the most part, in terms of the quarterbacks, DJ looked the best today. Yeah, he did look the best. He, he had a few really nice touchdown drives out there, and, and you could just see some of these throws he had under pressure. You mentioned the edge pressure from the tackles being out. I mean, it was it was affecting all the quarterbacks, but right. DJ made a couple of really nice throws with edge pressure in his mm -hmm. face, whether it be on a rollout or a straight drop back. He looked comfortable. He looked calm. He looked collected, and he, for the most part, was was throwing it on the money, and he he looked good again. I mean, we we sound like a broken record at this point, but he I've been we've been, both been so impressed of how he's really turned it around here in fall for what he looked like in the spring. Totally different guy now in yeah. the fall. He just seems so much more comfortable. And again, we just talked to him again for the second time this week, and I think that might be a bit telling that we talked to him for the second time this week. Again, we don't choose interviews. Oregon State hands them to us, so I think that's a bit interesting that we talked to him following today's action because you know he was the best quarterback as TJ saw, and you know he made some good moves. Granted, you know, not perfect, but again, if we were to, you know, talk about, you know, who looked the best today, it was DJ, and that's kind of been a theme. With that being said, though, DJ and Ben pretty even mixed with the ones and the twos. They really both rotated quite a bit today. Uh, again, we've got more notes on who looked better with what units and uh, on the damn board in today's practice report, so definitely go ahead and check that out. Uh, but for the most part, TJ, uh, I think Oregon State should feel pretty good after that first scrimmage. Some minor things that need to be cleaned up, you know, um, you know, procedural kind of stuff. You know, yeah. like you said, there were some penalties. Uh, a couple fumbles, uh, but for the most part, a clean scrimmage, and I think Oregon State feels pretty good about where they're heading into the second week, or into the second half, excuse me. And when we talked to Jonathan Smith post-practice, he said, the real work starts now. Yeah, and I think the real I think one of the other real pluses from today is I think the kickers looked good. They did. I think the kickers looked good. And that's a, that was a big storyline, you know, heading into the fall Definitely. is how the kickers look and Everett told us earlier this week that he felt healthy and today he was he was really letting it rip and, and he was booting it and, and looking good. Yeah, we definitely have uh, uh, all those results Atticus Sappington also kicked as what well, kicked today as well. So we'll definitely have the results of uh, how all those guys kicked on the on the damn board, but again as TJ said, uh, much better today and then uh, finally again Oregon State now will break tomorrow Sunday we're uh, awaiting to see what the practice schedule will be like next week but for the most part as Oregon State's now down uh, two weeks we got Research Stadium behind us we're getting closer folks uh, only a couple more weeks of actual camp before the Beavers start preparing for San Jose State in terms of game prep so make sure to stay locked to beaversedge.com TJ and I will continue to be at every practice this fall camp bringing you guys exclusive coverage of Oregon State's fall camp